serious. What is the deepest, darkest secret you found out about a friend that really messed with your head? Not really a very dark secret. But I had a friend that had many friends outside of school. People would always call him and ask him to hang out every day. Turns out he had an app that would fake call you with the names you put in. He would have actual conversations on the phone, with no one on the other side. Obviously. He felt that having no friends or girlfriends outside of school was embarrassing. Edit, just search for fake call. There will be multiple apps for this purpose. This girl I knew in high school who was on the same rugby team as me. Ever since the spring season started. She began showing up to practice more and more infrequently. Coaches always told us to stop asking about her and never said anything against her not showing up while giving sheet to other players who skip slacked off. Cut to our quarterfinals tournament in a couple of weeks. And she finally shows up except she's crying. She's still determined to play though and plays aggressively well against the other teams. I find out after that she lived in a physically abusive household and she finally got emancipated that week. Throughout the two years I had known her. She never gave any indication of anything like that. And as far as I know. No one else knew what was happening either. It came as a total surprise to me and really opened my eyes. Because it made me wonder for the first time if anyone else I knew was being covertly abused at home. Edited because I can't spell. One of the funniest most enjoyable guys to be around in high school had a paraplegic brother who was slowly dying throughout our time together. Only found out after we graduated and lost contact that he even had a brother and that he had died a few nights before prom. Really put a different perspective of all the memories we had together and the fun times we had. All the while he was quietly dealing with this by himself. Really hit me hard when I found out. One of my best friends has a severe hatred fear towards tools. After her noticing me noticing it she finally told me about it. Turns out her brother tried to heal her several times growing up. He's gotten arrested multiple times for a assault with and without weapons etc. Their mom was essentially a single parent and rather than dealing with it she just told her he was only playing and wouldn't actually do it. Nothing like insane siblings and good parenting. I worked at a coffee shop with a woman who was considerably older than myself. She's the most lovely, kind-hearted, and friendly person I've met. And she was sort of a motherly figure to me. I don't know how this came up in conversation. But one day she told me she cheats on her husband with her ex-husband every chance she gets. I just don't know how to feel about that. A colleague I'd been friendly with for 5 plus years faked having cancer. Shaved head. Gaunt makeup. Even a cane. I'd always bring her meals. Wear the solidarity ribbon. Offer to cover for her if she wasn't feeling well and needed to go home. Finally one of the other faculty members informed me it was all aroused. They all knew and had stopped feeding into it years ago. But whenever they confronted her about it. She denied it. I went to visit my at the time best friend. After we hadn't seen each other for a while. I asked about her smaller dog. Who wasn't at the house anymore. Backstory about this dog. He was bought as a puppy and when his owner was going through a divorce he put the dog in a basement and the only interactions he had with people were ones of abuse. So over time he became aggressive toward people. The original owner was putting him down and my friend decided to rescue and rehab him. She had him for a couple of years. And when I went to see her. He wasn't there anymore. So when I asked what happened she apparently had gotten pissed that he peed on the carpet. Decided to drive him to a dirt road by the airport and leave him there. She laughed when she told me that he ran after the car. You know. In a way where you could tell she expected me to find it funny too. I was livid. Shaking. Left and never talked to her again. IDK if that counts exactly but it dealt with my head. And still does. That they were physically violent with several of their partners. My best friend in high school once beat the sheet out of a girl he dated. And threatened her with violence a ton of other times. I only found out about that about a year later when the girl told me. Let's just say I didn't remain friends with that guy. I went to high school with a guy who turned out to be a child molester. He was wanted by Interpol for human trafficking as well. In school he was a nice. Quiet guy who always showed up for whatever he was involved in. We were in a few clubs together and I never ever picked up on an odd vibe. I feel like I'm pretty good with reading people but this is the one that completely got by me. This was years ago. But I learned from another classmate that my friend's parents were intentionally starving her for some reason unbeknownst to us at the time. She was naturally tiny so I didn't realize. 
but then her behavior started to change and I knew that she wasn't being treated right. After a while. The younger sister told us that their parents wanted her to be skinny, at 12 ducking years old, to look beautiful for an older guy that they'd arranged to be her husband. I don't really know what became of it seeing as I'm no longer in contact with any of my primary school friends. But I can only hope that she's doing well. And that her sister didn't have to follow in her footsteps. Two of my best friends share the same dad. They're a ducking month apart. But I love them both so much. I've been in both of their weddings. Cola. My cousin was my best friend. She was a year older than me. Loved anime and would stay up with me to binge watch and watch or other girly shows. Her and her brother even lived with us for a couple years after CPS took them from their mom. She said we would always be friends and our kids would grow up with each other like we did. Turns out she used to also love molesting my little sister. Found that out last year. My sister begged me not to confront her. What did she have to say about? I'm sorry I did that to you but I can't remember most of it. All those red flags. Of my sister trying to switch rooms and the huge personality change she showed after my cousin moved in. All this time I thought she was jealous. Now. That cousin is pregnant. Lies to everyone saying that my family used to abuse her and that she had to run away to a better life. Also. How she loves her mom so much even though all she did for the 10 years her kids were living with us was give my mom $100 and a box of plastic tableware. I had a friend from work who was older than me. We worked on the bar and spent a lot of time together and became good friends. He had a twin brother who he always wanted me to meet. He used to like a party and would often tell stories of mad acid fueled parties he had been to and we often went out out and had a few wild ones. He was a friendly upbeat guy but used to change in a second's notice and became unbearably angry and rude. He used to have these mood swings quite regularly and I started to notice that when he was happy he would refer to his twin brother as the more serious one and when he was angry his brother would be the upbeat and happy one. One Christmas he brought his family in to show them the restaurant we were working and his brother never came nor existed. I had a close friend in the 8th grade who clearly had an extremely strained relationship with her mother. Constant fighting. Defiance. Anger. ETC. Any semblance of a bond was simply non-existent. I always wondered what was up. But. In my youth. Chalked it up to well. We all hate our parents. One day. During a phone conversation I don't know what topic of conversation preceded it a voice began to crack. And she told me. When I was 9 years old. In the summer. My mother told me I was out of control and needed to be helped. She drove me to hospital. And before dropping me off. Told me I'll visit you on the weekends it was a mental hospital. Oopie. The needles they used on those people when they freaked. I stayed there for a few weeks. My father had to fight to get me out. I don't remember exactly what I said. Except that I was so sorry. Mostly I just wanted to hug her until she didn't need to cry anymore. This pops into my head from time to time. We lost touch. I hope life is treating her okay. One of my friends over a long time on WoW suddenly went missing on raid night. I asked one of his viral friends what happened. Turns out he got locked up for murdering someone. Never saw him again. There was a girl from a major guild on my old server who apparently used to get drunk and rage on her guildies all the time. I quit playing for a while and when I came back I didn't see her at all. I asked what happened to her and a bunch of people told me she was murdered. University in my halls of residence. Made friends with a guy who was into heavy metal music. He was quite different compared to myself. Me sporty involved in university football team etc. He was big into his pot and metal music. But I talk to anyone and if you're not a big dig I don't care how you dress or what music you like etc. He had come from the other side of the country and I could tell he felt quite lonely and was just about surviving financially. So I used to invite him into my room with other friends and it would always end up me and him talking about conspiracy theories and all sorts till the early hours. When we were going out I would drag him out with me and I would stick a 20 or so in his pocket and say when you make it big, he was a musician, you can give me a backstage pass. I started a cook off with him in the halls as he wasn't sure how to cook so gave him a few recipes and he ran with it. He was a great guy. We liked totally different things but at the same time connected. Anyway one of these nights I forced him out because he was looking homesick in his room. He was drunk and we were walking home he put his arm around me and said. You know if it wasn't for you I wouldn't be here right now. Me thinking he was referring to him being out and drunk I said. 
I know you were tough to persuade to come out. He responds no. Not this I mean you saved me so many times and you don't know it. Being confused I asked what he meant. Dude I'm so unhappy here I've thought about suicide and at times gone to do it. Only for you to come in and start talking to me. Or you forced me to come out. I never wanted to be here. My parents forced me here. I just wanted to end it all. I was drunk and a bit in shock and said back that he should never end it over being somewhere you don't want to be. Doing something you don't want to do. You can change that by just dropping out and doing something you really want to do. No one would see you as a failure but as someone who has the gonads to go against the flow and chase the dream of what they want to do. I remember him looking straight at me and he smiled and nodded at me. He then motioned to the takeaway and asked if I wanted anything he was buying. He then laughed and said well you are it's your money. A few weeks later we broke for Christmas and we all went back to where we came from for the holidays. He rang me and he was in the car with a friend driving back to university to get his stuff he was leaving I remember him sounding so relieved he thanked me for everything. It was only later I realized the difference I made. And it messed my head a little bit. Started thinking how if I hadn't have been the way I was what would have happened and the knock on effect it would have had for me and his family. Hope you're doing well Jim and rocking it. My childhood best friend's mom was Miss Perfect. Always had the best snacks made for play dates. House was perfectly neat. Hair perfectly combed. She was everyone's soft bowl coach. Girl scout leader. Class mom. Everything. My mom said when she used to see her when picking us kids up from school. Her mom's breath always smelled perfectly minty fresh. Like she was so perfect. I am in college now and recently attended her funeral. She was a raging alcoholic. Her breath always smelled minty fresh from mouthwash to cover up the stench of her drink. She literally healed herself with alcohol. So sad. Literally what seemed like the perfect woman was killing herself over the span of 10 years. I have no idea wh at she was going through to this day. R.I.P. Edit, I used literally twice get off my case. I found out my so has a fetish for morbidly obese women. I'm talking rolls upon rolls. Probably 600 LB plus. He doesn't know that I know. Dash. I have been trying to lose weight. And he keeps poking fun at my strange diet. I feel like he isn't going to be attracted to me when I reach my goal weight. Yeah. I feel like the fact that he's still with you is a good indicator that physical attraction isn't a priority to him and that obese women is just a small, lol, fetish to him. I went to high school in a small, affluent suburban town. I knew this girl. We weren't that close but we had some mutual friends so we were occasionally hanging in the same circles. She was quiet. A good student. That type. Years later she became a public advocate for children who had been sold into pros teachuchun. It turned out starting from the age of 10, so the entire time I knew her. Plus more, her parents had been forcing her into pros teachuchun. This was apparently going on weeknights after school. It ducked me up so bad to imagine what she must have been going through while still having to go to school and being a great student. And it ducked me up even more to think this could be happening in my own hometown. But the thing that really ducked me up the most was that her parents used the money from this to pay for her to go to college, one of the most prestigious public universities in the US. Like in some ducked up way they thought they were helping her. Scarred me for life. That she was a user. She used other people to her advantage, mostly monetarily, but also emotionally. She'd get with guys she knew liked her and have them buy her expensive things before breaking things off with them. I found out accidentally when she had a little too much to drink one day and gleefully told me what she'd done while talking shit about all those guys, calling them stupid. Annoying. ETC. We'd been best friends for two years at that point and I had no idea she was even capable of doing such things. Because she'd always treated me well. I cut her off completely and to this day she still emails me occasionally telling me of her woe is me stories. To think that I called her my best friend. I knew a guy since freshman year of high school. And then we were roommates for two years in college. Nicest guy you could ever meet. Turns out he was a major drug trafficker. When he was finally caught they ended up seizing something like $200,000 worth of cash and prepaid debit cards. The entire time I knew him I had no idea. He drove a 10 year old car. We lived in a pretty crappy apartment on a mess side of town. And still took out student loans and had a used car loan. Just blew my mind someone so nice and modest could be into something like that. 
a friend of mine who I have known for probably 15 years dropped a doozy on his circle of friends. He was a perfectly normal dude. A little shy and quiet growing up. But he did well in school. He loves sports. And always came to hang out whenever the group went somewhere. Then he got arrested for verism because he was videotaping dudes using the urinals at the college he had recently graduated from. Everyone. From all his friends to his siblings to his parents was shocked that such a mild-mannered, normal dude would do that and never even drop a hint. He ended up getting put on house arrest for a year. I visited a few times. Tried to be really supportive and see him through all of this. But Shane seems to have gotten the best of him. He doesn't respond to calls or texts and has just kinda faded away. I've lost touch with him. But his dad is a family friend so I know he's alive and well. He grew up in a really conservative household and I feel like he just grew up so quiet because his true self was being repressed. Maybe he has always been gay and has been too ashamed to come out. Maybe I'm completely wrong. Who knows? All I know is. Either way I'd love him all the same. And I wish he would get in touch. I didn't find out as more of he told me. I grew up in a super sheltered Mormon community and as you could I'm again all my friends were super sheltered Mormons. I on the other hand was a devil child who left the church at 14. Because of this I got people everything from monsters to porn on flash drives. My best friend Nate, not his real name, asked me to get some hardcore BDSM stuff once and I did without a problem you know different strokes for different people. Well one day he came up to me at school and asked me if I could get him some younger porn like 16 or 17 year old kid porn. I promptly told him no and that day I stopped getting people porn that my best friend's dad was an alcoholic who would hit her and her mother. Once she told me and our other friend. She refused to tell the police. So nothing permanent has been done about it. She says he's better now and gets drunk less often. But I still can't stop thinking about it. Friend telling me she got an abortion because he didn't want her current BF to be the father of any of her children. They're still together. FBI showed up at best friend's dorm room one day. Overheard them questioning him. He'd been downloading CP and he told them the details and what he'd search for. ETC. They'd been tracking his computer for a while. He'd been doing this a long time. Really messed me up. Made me question how I could not have seen it in him and this question nearly every decision I ever made. Still have a hard time coping. Feels good to let it.